Today we're going to talk about the top 10 changes to expect from 12 weeks to six months on TRT. So keep watching. In previous videos, we've discussed what to expect on TRT at two weeks and what to expect at six weeks. So today, from 12 weeks to six months, we're gonna go through these 10 things um, that you can expect change-wise. So first one, sex drive. Yeah, that's kind of the common one. Most people uh, hope to improve in the first six months, if not sooner. So at six weeks, we discussed how some people may start noticing um, some changes in sex drive. It doesn't happen for everybody. There are some people that very quickly at the start of therapy, they can have a surge in things like mood and energy and sex drive. But for the majority of people at that six week point, things are beginning to change a little bit. Um, so when you get to 12 weeks, you know, you would have had your blood test already. The doctor would have checked your, your, your blood markers, seen how you're feeling um, and made some changes to sort of steer you in the right direction or, or, or you know, or give you advice to stay on track where you are um, with the aim of heading in the right, in the right direction. Um, so by 12 weeks, you know, it's been a bit of time since that point. Um, this, I'd say that the sex drive is where this, this begins to change in some way for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, not everybody, and that's something, you know, there's still outliers with this general sort of um, consensus of things. But the feedback that I get is that sex drive, starting from this point onwards, is when more consistently it begins to happen. Not necessarily like a switch that turns on, that it's, uh, you know, I'll have, you know, out of a month, maybe instead of a day where I had a better sex drive, it's now five, 10, 15, um, and it's in improving. People think they have more sexual thoughts, their libido starts to go up. I mean, is that what you sort of experienced? Yeah, but I don't think it's always a linear improvement. No. I think there can be times when, you know, even after 25 years on TRT, yeah, there are days that your sex drive isn't always getting better and better every day. Um, you might have a day that it's not good. And there's so many factors that affect sex drive, and it's not just hormonal. Yeah. In general, uh, things that we've seen that you could expect from TRT would be a, a, a general, that's a very generalized way to say sex drive improvement. But you can't expect every day and keep a scorecard, and if you, you didn't fall into that very highly strung sexual day, then, then somehow the, the treatment failed. Yeah. yeah. You can't, so, so you may be one of those guys where your sex drive isn't changing massively at this point. You may be one of those guys. So it's not if you're not in that group, something's wrong. You know, if, if you're working with the doctor and steering you, you know, in the right direction, you may have really great levels. It may just be that you need to be on therapy, you know, longer to have that effect. Would you say that? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So you, 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 when you started, you knew about this point, you were noticing some changes, sex drive wise. Yeah. At six yeah. months, I, I noticed before six months that the sex drive was improving. And yeah. so I was perhaps an outlier where, you know, things seemed to be working in the right direction from nearly the beginning. Mm. Yeah, see, for me, I mean, uh, you know, Mike talks about things being multifactorial with, with sex drive. I mean, I think the initial, this happens for, for quite a lot of guys, the initial part of starting therapy, if you've been feeling pretty anxious or stressed about the whole situation, you know, running up to it, finding out you know, potentially this is why you've got symptoms and then starting therapy, you can still feel anxious, you know? So lots of guys, are, uh, uh, an anxiety can be triggered by, you know, just I suppose your, your normal thought process of why am I starting this? Is everything right? How long will this take to work? I've heard, and this is, this is I think is real big cause of anxiety is like forum spaces and, and things like that. I mentioned that before, but if, you, if, you're, if you're constantly reading about people that are having problems or are having great changes, then you start questioning whether it should be happening for yourself. Yeah. So I think that happened for me a lot. As, you know, 12, 12 weeks onwards, there are people, you know, saying things are going really well for them. And I'm like, why is that not happening for me? And I think just the stress of, of thinking that it wasn't yeah. happening, that can affect sex drive. You know, you're not focused. You're not, you're not mindful of what's going on around you. You're, just, you're in sort of, you know, thinking what, what might be happening or, or should be happening. So that's definitely something... Um, you know, to, to be aware of that if you're, and it's not abnormal to not, you know, to, to feel anxious, you know, at the start of therapy. So it is a new venture, as it were, a new treatment, you know, of a, of a hormone therapy that is, is lifelong, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I think the second item to consider of the top 10 things that may be, you may want to expect on TRT at six months would be changes in your erection. So 
Um, in many times, uh, and what we've heard <clears> from patients is the erections may be the, the last thing to come online, but I think it, it's so variable based on where you started from when you started treatment. So if you had atherosclerosis, um, car uh, cardiovascular dis issues, epithelium problems, yeah. uh, you've gone a long time with erectile dysfunction, which may also go hand in hand with having a, a long time with low testosterone. There may be damage that takes longer to heal and repair than if you, know, you, you didn't have those issues for as long. So uh, in some people, it may uh, had a dip in, in the testosterone levels, uh, short-term erectile dysfunction, and that gets corrected and sorted you know, quite quickly within the TRT treatment. Uh, but at six months, uh, you should start seeing erections starting to come back. Yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, like you say, it's yeah. variable, isn't it? And I, something I think about is like, everyone's variable, like you said, but if you've had, let's just say for 10 years, you've not had sufficient levels of your hormones, that means that you've not had regular erections, yeah. right? So let's just say in your prime of, of feeling, feeling great, you had one a day, you know, and then you've gone from that to two every six months. And then over the years, that frequency of blood in and out the penis, you know, and that, the functionality of that organ yep. has now changed because you've not had that function happening. If you then start TRT and, okay, maybe the hormones, you know, improve how you feel. Obviously, they can improve blood flow and, you know, you know the, the hormones have that effect and the, the cascade is, is, is needed to, to get that going. It doesn't necessarily mean that suddenly everything's going to start working again, you know, and that's where things like low dose Cialis, yep. you know, some guys have, you know, used low dose Cialis, Tadalafil, um, you know, PD5 inhibitor alongside yeah, their TRT and that can actually, we've seen that's, that's helped restore function, it get things back faster and some guys have then not needed to be on it after that, you know, once things get going. I mean, lots keep going for sort of their own confidence. Yeah, I mean, um, for other people it could help rehabilitate the, the weak erections of the past or yeah. if you're frustrated because your morning erections aren't coming on as, as quickly or as strongly, um, having um, some vasodilation occurring because of increased nitric oxide from the PD5 inhibitors, the uh, Viagra, Cialis, Tadalafil, Sildenafil, these uh, can help with rehabilitation. And we've, you know, we've there's some studies out there that talk about men who have had nerve crush after prostate surgeries. And uh, as a result, part of the rehabilitation treatment is um, some of these PD5 inhibitors. So for, for these men, some people have this thought that if I'm on this erectile aid, I'm either always going to need it or, oh, I guess I have ED, which can be quite embarrassing. Yeah, or, or you need to have the tablet to function, right? And yeah. then they feel like, oh, well, I won't take that because then I'm, it's a crutch and I'm Absolutely. responsible on it. But the rehab part. But the is. rehab part is important. I mean, I used to know an ophthalmologist of all people and, and she would say that it should be put, Viagra should be put in the water supply. So, um, you know, because it, it has such an impact and an improvement on, on health, or, or maybe it was just to, yeah, to make she's her happy. Viagra. Yeah, she was happy with her, but her partner was happy, no, so but, she was but, happy. But weirdly, like guys with autoimmune conditions, like Reynolds yeah. and things like that, I know, uh, you know a few people have said that uh, actually women and men with autoimmunity can use that to actually help blood flow. Um, and a few you know, cardiologists say it's one of the few drugs that systemically increases mm -hmm nitric oxide and it can have its benefits you know in, yeah. in the blood vessels so absolutely i mean the, the the recovery thing i mean that that makes sense to me i mean i when i used to work in the nhs uh, I, I asked an old patient of mine he's in his 90s and i was like what's like the best you, know, you give me any advice you know that just being a, a person in a different generation he was literally like look at this he's like if you don't use it you lose it. it and i was like <laughs> fair enough but now you see it that when guys have not used it for a while you know, you, you can lose the effectiveness, but it can be restored through those things, yeah. right? And, and also, um, I think it's important to distinguish between morning erections, nocturnal erections, spontaneous erections, and erections on demand when you need them. And, and I think that kind of all falls into one of the things that, that can improve. Um, you know, morning erections are sometimes envisioned that you, you know, you're, you're, you're going to the toilet in the morning and you've got to fight to keep your boner down so, or you can hang a towel from it and it won't go down <laughs> at that particular point in time. Like me, myself and yeah. Irene, like when he's got like the, uh, yeah. the, the, the picture <laughs> and that, frame. <laughs> and that very well may happen, but in many cases... It's never happened to me. It yeah. may just happen nocturnally or it may yeah. happen in the early hours of the morning mm. and you're still 
you know, unconscious to recognize it, or you might kind of have it incorporated into a dream. And so all these are still positive effects of you getting the blood flow to your penis and the, and the erections. And I think that could all be classified as a morning erection. Would, yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. yeah. So I think there's was a doctor that said, actually, morning erections are just sort of leftover nighttime erections, nocturnal erections, actually. Yeah. Right. So if you don't wake up with one, it doesn't mean that there's something awful that's, you know, that's not working, yeah, basically. Exactly. So it's no time to panic. Yeah. Then there's the erections, kind of the on-demand, as-you-need-them uh, erections and and that could be complicated from um, you know psychosomatic issues if mm -hmm. you have gone through the past of having the low testosterone it not working for you when you need it and you know you're mentally you think in the game you're not sure and your anxiety gets the best of you then you know even with the Viagra Cialis to Dalva Vitra, any of those it still may not be enough because your, your, your anxiousness is going to cause vasoconstriction, which would be the opposite of the vasodilation that you need. Well, you know, if you've had episodes of ED in the past, so, you know, talking about this timelines of things, this doesn't matter from, you know, from in therapy at any point. If you've had the trauma of not having got an erection before in a, in a, a situation where there's associated shame and criticism and things around it, um, you know, there's always that, the risk that because you've had that traumatic situation that, Obviously, you're going to have that negative reaction when approaching. There's absolutely self-pressure that happens, and I know lots of guys that actually it can be that you know by themselves they can get an erection, they're getting nighttime erections, um, you know, semis during the day, things like that. But then, because of the old traumatic situations of having you know it not worked with someone in the past, that the, the pressure then builds up. So they're like, I've got ED issues, and the testosterone may not be working, therapy may not be working, HRT may not be working, but actually there can be definitely a psychological aspect. And that's where guys have seen sexual therapists, you know, um, it's absolutely something that they can work through. Uh, psychologists work with that as well. Absolutely. So that's just another another part to consider, isn't it? Of course, you can also not fancy a partner. Yeah, that's you true. just be tired yeah, yeah. or not be in the mood. <laughs> yeah, Or, or exactly. something you kind of become the same or it becomes a routine, but... Um, yeah, there's yeah. lots of factors, but I think, uh, and we talk about it more, like when we get, we talk about in other videos, but, the normal expectations here are generally you should start noticing something, but don't get, you know, bothered if you if you don't if you're not if you're not noticing those yeah. things, right? And because it, yeah, they're so multifactorial, so, it's a, so much so. Yeah. So the next item that you uh, should be able to expect as far as a change around the six month period is muscle muscle mass uh, and strength, and and lots of this is dose dependent. Uh, of course, based on certain studies that I think uh, was the same, Bastian had, had, had studied men over 20 weeks who were given various levels of testosterone and found there was an increase in, in muscle mass and strength, especially in the, in the lower, um, uh, lower, lower leg strength in particular. But in general, we kind of all expect, we think of testosterone, uh, one of the, the biggest targets for the androgen receptor is its muscle mass, uh, okay? Um, so in general, we know that muscle mass can increase on, on TRT. Um, what you... Yeah, so it, it, yeah, I'd say this is where people start to notice that difference again. And it, particularly, it's like, oh yeah. Now people, the thing is, people either go, yep, I've trained before, I know what I'm doing, I'm eating right, all those sorts of things. I'm, I'm, I've got good sleep hygiene. And they're like, yeah, and now I'm noticing results that I used to notice before I had all these issues. So there's that, but there's also guys that maybe it's been so long or it's unfamiliar to them and they're like and actually lots of guys go I'm not happy I've put on weight so they're on the scales and they're like yeah I'm putting on loads of weight and I don't know what's wrong um you know I say loads but a good a substantial amount of weight and it, you know it it can be that actually because we've had guys do it where they have done you know the, the scans where it separates the the fat and the, and the muscle and the bone and all these sorts of things and it's actually that they put on muscle mass they don't look massively leaner they've not lost body fat but actually just starting getting optimal testosterone just started to put on muscle mass. And some guys, you know, they can put on like five, five kg and yeah. sort of by the first 12 weeks. It can weeks. be quite shocking for some um, men yeah. because they weren't expecting that or they didn't want to get that, that, that big in particular. But that's, I think, in the culture of, of gym goers and etc., cetera, it, it makes people think, oh, is this just for, for muscle mass and strength? But this is very important for your generalized health as you age to have the appropriate amount of muscle mass. Otherwise, you, you're going the opposite direction and going into more of a wasting type of disease. So mm -hmm. having the proper amount of muscle mass, I shouldn't really talk about it. You're the ex-physio. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, yeah. You know, I think it's one of those things where 
I mean, there's there's lots of teenagers as well, right? That have great great testosterone levels. There are lots of you know, say teenagers. There's lots of guys with great testosterone levels that aren't doing the right things. So it's very much, you know, if you if you're still not if you're still eating you know crap and and not exercising correctly, sensibly, you're not sleeping, um, you're boozing a lot, you know, all those sorts of things. It, all those other factors, like with any other normal person you know with a normal working hormonal system they're all going to affect those sorts of things just because yep. you add in trt it's not suddenly going to magically override all the normal things that you need to put on muscle mass no right? and if you're running a calorie deficit and, and you're just literally not eating yeah then you can't expect to put on a lot of muscle mass but this assumes that you know all things being equal to what you're doing before mm -hmm. uh with a normal kind of diet that you know you could expect to see some increase in muscle mass as a function of testosterone yeah so yeah, that's, that's a good point. So the next thing is energy levels. Okay, so energy levels, um, I would say, again, it will keep saying the same things, but the point has to be driven home that it is a real mixed bag with this, Very right? Mixed. You you know, you can have, start to see improvements in, in energy levels, like we said in the other videos earlier on. You know, some guys are suddenly like, wow, I'm I'm up early, I feel like I can do things, I can do, do more with, with, with you know, um, less sleep but then you know you've still got guys that maybe they've been affected for so long from lack of hormones and lack of recovery and that their body's just not conditioned right it's not yeah. suddenly going to spring everything back to life no and, and they can also have um, low cortisol issues um, so if they tend to be more tired in the morning after starting trt you know then that could actually drive it down even lower that are, and, or they have thyroid issues yeah you can affect energy levels so we talk about trt right but actually it's hrt you need to make sure the effects on the other things are happening. You may have thyroid issues because you've had other hormone yeah. issues. So right? on this particular video, we're talking about just TRT, but mm -hmm. all the other hormones can, can have to be considered. Be right? considered absolutely. Um, so I think another really really important part is because I this sort of, I did this was that I was I got excited, you know, like getting testosterone back in my body. Real issue without without it for a few years. But then got the testosterone, so I was like, "Yep." Yeah. So got a bit more energy. I'm going to train yep. like an absolute beast. So I was sort of trying to oh, say that for me, five yeah. days a week. Five days a week. <laughs> Do <Doing> some <laughs> weights. Yeah. But yeah, I did that, and then I added in cardio, and I was like, "Well, and you lift bit. heavy as well." Well, I, I train to. with you, and, and you go a lot heavier than I do. You're just really weak, mate. No, I just got more um, joy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. And <laughs> um, the. Um, so so yeah. So basically, what I did was I was also like, I'm a, I'm carrying a bit of fat, so I'm not going to eat much. You know, so I was, yeah. I, was, I was, like you said, on a massive calorie deficit. So actually, by the time I got to like 16 weeks, I was knackered and I was really concerned, like, you know, I've, I've, you know, what's going on here? My energy's gone and I've, you know, been doing everything right, but I'd just not been eating enough. I'd started really early because I got excited. Yeah. So I actually took a dip between sort of 12 and six months where I had to be, you know, I think it was actually you actually that said like, you know, sort it out because yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're sort of questioning what I've been doing. You can't so, do everything. You can't expect you're going to be Superman after you're doing testosterone treatment and then do all these things. Your body's still going to be knackered. And so you have to have the proper recovery, the proper rest and diet and don't overdo it at the gym. Yeah. You're not that weak, mate. I was only joking. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so look at the size of it. Um, so yeah, so, that, so I think that's important. Be aware of those other things that can cause, you know, tiredness um, uh, and lack of energy levels, you know, across the board, mm. you know, not enough food, not enough rest, all those sorts of things. Um, so the fifth item on the list uh, for what to expect at six months would be a change in mood. I mean, it, a lot of, uh, of men come uh, looking at TRT as an option because they've either been depressed, suffer from anxiety, they've got brain fog. Um, and the generalized mood um, isn't always where it was when they were younger or at an earlier state. So on TRT, at six months, uh, we've seen, and I can see in myself, a noticeable improvement in mood uh, overall. You know, feel a bit more uplifted. We know that testosterone can affect the dopamine levels, and the dopamine is the, the kind of the pleasure hormone, right? And you feel a bit better with dopamine. Uh, and so that's one positive change. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a lot of guys say. So there's lots of guys that if they are comfortable with the therapy, so I talked about me feeling anxious and there's, there's definitely a whole group of people. So you feel anxious on TRT initially, you're not alone. You know, your mood can be lower because all of those other factors, 
you know, the classic questioning of, you know, my hormones all over the place. Should I be on this? Should I be on that? Should I be on daily injections? Should I be on weekly? You know, should I be on HCG? All those sorts of things can can create anxiety and actually lower your mood, right? But if you're if you're in a in a place where maybe you're not analysing things a lot, this is where things start to change. I'd say the most for, yeah. for mood. That's what I've witnessed with I mean, guys. Yeah, I was fortunate that um, they just invented the internet when I was starting. <laughs> in great mood because you and were... um, I, you know there was a few muscle forums. You know, you get some information, but I didn't even, it, it did not exist like it does today. So essentially, I started testosterone treatment. I just cracked on with it. I didn't know the difference. Things seemed to be getting better. I had more resilience. So everything was as I thought should be. So I, I didn't have anything to compare it with uh, as people do today. And they can. Yeah, so maybe that's a difference because we talked in the other video about yeah. how quickly you felt different. I mean, before I'd even started, I had a, a view of what may or may not happen, good and bad, because of forums. Yeah. I was like, I may feel like I've got these bad symptoms because my levels may be too high, maybe too low. I might get this, that, and the other. I, sh I may feel good. I may, you know, why is it not feeling good? So I arrived like a bit of a wreck, ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you probably just cut into it yeah. and didn't have all that. No, I, I didn't. And, and that's on both times because remember, my story is, you know, the first time. I, I, you know, I started treatment, it was the back-to-back -back injections. And then I was just pretty much left stranded by the doctor who didn't, who said, okay, that's enough, that's all you get. Your body should have just ballooned back into this new level that it got used to. So I, 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 I had to go through a whole period of being even lower than when I started, even more depressed, um, and things just didn't work for a good six to eight months before I was retreated and restarted on the testosterone treatment with patches. Uh, for a while, which then improved the mood, and then restarted again on another treatment with uh, t um, topical scrotal testosterone cream, testo cream. So I had all these different restarts on my on my TRT, and every time for me it was, you know, without testosterone I felt rubbish, and with testosterone it was just a continuous Im improvement. Um, you know, there were times that. Um, like you know we can go into another video but you know 12 15 years down the road something wasn't right but we now know that there are other hormone factors at play that like like thyroid that needed to be adjusted but overall straight up trt did make a massive difference in my life um and hopefully it makes a difference in everyone other people's lives as well okay so number six uh, on the list of things to expect between 12 weeks and six months is your testicles may shrink or atrophy um, is, is the medical term, Yeah. right? So some men, um, and obviously there, there's a difference between people anyway and, and what this happens to, uh, when it happens rather. And if you're on HCG, obviously your risk but from the start, your risk of testicular atrophy is probably lower. It's, yeah, Safe it can, to say. It can be a lot lower. Yeah. But, but, but some men, if they're overstimulated, understimulated, um, they don't always meet the expectation. I think there's an expectation out there that you'll do HCG or even HMG uh, for that matter, it's going to just balloon up the size of the testes and they're going to have these, these massive egg sized testes. You got those, don't you? Absolutely not. <laughs> Never did. <laughs> but um, but that's not always the case. And I've I've um, been uh, prescribed for fertility uh, HMG and HCG, and I'd noticed that um, especially after years of not being on any HCG at all or LH or FSH or gonadotropin, that um, they, they felt a bit heavier. But did the actual size and shape change massively? And I think it was negligible. That, that but but what I did notice is a fullness, a heaviness. If you know, to, to the scrotum and, and in general, I could say the testes. Mm. And when I got a blood test, um, I found that, in a blood test, when I got a, a fertility test, that that's, my testes were, were producing around 156 million sperm, of which 72% were motile. So they're, they're moving in the right direction. That's on your LinkedIn account, isn't it? Yeah, well? that's going to yes. be, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, Instagram too. <laughs> I may have pictures. Yeah. So, I mean, I've been, I've been on HCG and off of HCG and I did, did get atrophy. Um, uh, off HCG, but it wasn't as terrifying or as uncomfortable that I thought it would be before I started. I thought you know mm -hmm. they were doing disappear inside me and and it was going to be horrendously painful. Yeah, but I, I did. It wasn't. I, I got I got some tightening of the scrotum. Things shrunk a little bit. 
made the penis look bigger, which is what lots of guys yeah, say yeah. is a, a win, and particularly for me, it was incredible. So, um, so, so there's that too as well. And then going on uh, HCG, uh, it, again, it didn't get didn't get huge, you know. And my sperm count is fine um, now being on HCG, um, but testicles aren't like super huge or anything like that, you know. But bigger than where they were before. Yeah, and um, that's the thing. You may have an image in your mind. For me, it's been so long ago; it's hard to remember if they were much, much bigger in the, in the past. That's cool. I mean, it's it's personal whether your testicles are going to shrink and, and how much. There are lots of guys that are on just testosterone alone and that they don't notice a massive amount of atrophy. Sometimes it can happen; it can plateau a little bit. But obviously, if you're working with, with the doctor, if you're concerned about that, you know, there's HCG that can be used to help with you know testicular size and not just fertility, just for aesthetic reasons. So, so that's basically something that you can can expect, yeah. right? Um, so, uh, do you want to go for this one? Yeah, well actually you should talk about this one. This is what happens to your skin on TRT, on testosterone treatment. And mm -hmm. uh, well for me, I, I did get- What can happen What can skin. happen, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, doesn't always happen. Some people have no problems at all. Uh, I think there's a generalized increase in oil, oil in the skin or sebum. And some people are more prone to acne with this increased oil in the skin. Uh, some people have dry skin, it could be a godsend. Other people, it could be a nightmare because the, the amount of acne really increases. And I think, Sam, you can talk about that more. Yes, yeah, so I've always been a bit acne prone. And, and when I started TRT, I uh, had some flare ups and it did, did get worse at one point. Um, you know, there's uh, some great stuff on the, the Lifting Dermatologist channel. Uh, Stephen Devos um, about some acne acne things on TRT so you can always look at those videos yeah, we'll put a link over here yeah put, the, put a link the, um, so up here or something or in, in the bottom but yeah that, that's that's good information lots of the topicals there's like you know differin and retin-a I think is good and, and, and then there's obviously like the oral type medications if it antibiotics if I know they're sort of going a little bit out of favor with some of the doctors but there's also Accutane and things like that and you know we could do a whole video on that but that happened to me and and, and uh, the, the, I got a bit more acne on my back in particular, but I did find that when I started like a, what I probably should have started, and I do tell a lot of guys that there's something to help, is like a preventative acne protocol. So um, some good stuff on Excel Mail actually about what guys do, and um, that's the forum, Nelson Virgil's forum, and uh, uh, I just found a good thread, a few good threads on there initially. And you, it's just making sure, like most guys can't scrub the middle of their back, yeah, I, I definitely can't like so I that just getting to that middle part like you know I'm sat in a chair now that's where there's a bit, a bit of sweat just making sure that during the shower you give that a bit of a scrub um, you know we could uh, do a whole video on on sort of maybe acne protocols but there's good some good soaps like sal3 so sulfur mm. soap you can use um, you know there, there's some good sort of um, uh, combinations of things but showering twice a day as a preventative sort of me measure you know, washing bed sheets every week, you know, that, that sort of thing can be quite helpful for yeah. acne prone guys if, if they're worried about it. But it can happen, it doesn't happen to everyone. I mean, to be fair, I've not heard of a lot of guys that have acne that's unmanageable yeah. in TRT. It's usually just during the changes. Yeah, or right? a few spots on the shoulders and more than you had a few on the back. Yeah. Um, but, you know, with the skin, you can also get an increase in body hair yeah. as well. Um, I've known people, I've friends of mine who started TRT that had you know, quite smooth on their chest mm. and they would grow some more chest hair out of nowhere. So, well, it's from the androgens, obviously, mm. but it, this is something to look out for. I know when I started, I didn't have very much facial hair um, and obviously I got facial hair now. So, um, it, you know, I think it can thicken the facial hair on some people if you're prone to having more of a beard. So, you know, yes, androgens, testosterone has an impact on, on your skin. It can thicken skin as well, I believe. I mean, I, I, my face has been pretty, like, smashed up from from rugby repetitively over the years. And I did have really thin patches of skin. I definitely noticed it's now thicker. You know, it's almost like it's healed healed better. And I, I know there are, there is some uh, some evidence out there showing that it can thicken the skin and improve skin, uh, increase sort of its... Uh, Speaking of thickening, do you know what else you can thicken? Um, That's for another video. Yeah, no, no, nothing in my case. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, so obviously, you may lose, so number, well, talking about hair, right? Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot about this, but see, yeah. it's just become part of me now mm. that, you know, I had hair uh, when I was younger, in my 20s, and over time, I was probably prone to losing it anyway. And, you know, by my early to mid 30s, I started shaving it, so I'm a right slap head now, but I'm, you know, I'm, I own the look, and, um, 
Yeah. You know, it, it, I, had to make, I had to look back and say, right, it's better to have a healthy libido, you know, decent amount of uh, a muscle mass to, to go into uh, aging and the hair, you know, it, it didn't bother me. Yeah. And you so, save money on haircuts. Yeah. So that's and shampoo. Yeah. So. yeah. so you can, I mean, that hair loss is one of those things where, you know, the, the, the advice from a doctor is that you, you can get some, some hair loss, right? But it's basically if you genetically are predisposed to it. You know, yeah. I mean, you, you see lots of guys who even abuse hormones and, and, you know, anabolic steroids and things like that that are very strong and, and are very harsh on your hair and they don't lose their hair, right? But you get some that do. And I think the general consensus is that if you're going to lose your hair, you're going to lose your hair, yeah. right? Uh, you, you definitely will going to lose your hair. Yeah. But if you uh, go from a low level of hormones to a, an optimal or higher level of hormones, it's gonna, you're going to lose it faster, right? Then yeah, you were it's, it's, it's you you would have reached the state that you would have reached had you always had those optimal levels of hormones. So yeah. if you were always meant to, to have a high level of hormones through your twenties, you may have lost your hair in your you know mid to late twenties. If you're meant to lose it in your fifties because you had a little drip feed of testosterone, but because it's now brought up to a normal healthy level, you may you may lose it a little bit earlier. But in general, um, there isn't a whole lot you can do. There are some. Um, topical formulations, of course, are the uh, the approved licensed formulations like finasteride, but that would go counter to many people having improvements of their libido and their erectile quality, and that can have lasting impact as far as people having finasteride syndrome. Um, yeah, I mean, none of the doctors use but, oral finasteride. But that's not or usually recommended in people that are already having issues with their, um, their testosterone treatment. So some people... Uh, may as an option have topical finasteride yep. or topical finasteride with latanoprost or bimatoprost, which are um, prostaglandin analogs. Do you say minoxidil? And regain a minoxidil. Yeah, that's yeah. over the counter as well, so you can use that. And guys have had some good, good, good results with that as well if they're a bit prone to it. So, but, yeah. I mean, that's, that's those are some kind of you know, techniques or options to, to maybe kind of hold on for uh, if you have a little bit longer. So. Mm. What's next on the list, Sam? So number eight on the list is lipid changes. So on blood work, changes in your lipid panel. So these are can normally be in the right direction. There are many other factors. Obviously, if you're they say if you're a high saturated fat diet, you may then increase your LDL. But in general, testosterone treatment, um, replacement treatment, can bring your lipid, lipids into um, uh, into better balance, like, if you will, you, you tend to see an, a decrease in overall cholesterol. Okay, but then sometimes you can also see a decrease in HDL, the so-called good cholesterol, and, uh, and then there's, there's also been cases of reductions in triglycerides. And we've seen patients who have claimed within the first you know, six weeks or six months even uh, a reduction in triglyceride levels. Normally, at six months we would see it because that's when the six-month blood test occurs, and um, it's a nice drop from baseline. It's like I said, if you're still doing the wrong things, you know, in terms of drinking, eating poorly, and, and, and to be fair, like, you know, at this point, it could be pretty hard. Like, if you're not feeling better and people haven't managed to change their their diets yet, I, don't, I think it's really important that if you haven't managed to, like, get your life on track in terms of right diet and, and exercise and things like that, it's it's not it's not something you should be ashamed of, right? Yeah. You've been coming from like a lower level to, to to feeling better again. You just got to like give yourself time. There's there's plenty of time the rest of your life to try and work on it. So if you are someone that hasn't you know got an improvement in lipids or or, or blood profile or even body composition or, or things like that or uh, or energy even, and it's because maybe you haven't corrected yeah. some of those factors yet. I think it's important to note that you know that. It, it may not happen, and you know you shouldn't really be ashamed of it yet. You can work on those things, right? Yeah, and also a side note to you know, lipids, you can also talk about both glycemic control and diastolic blood pressure. They're known to decrease when on TRT. You know, obviously there's other factors, but in general, in some of the studies and some of the thing, patients that have come through, uh, diastolic pressure can be uh, lowered as well as improvement in glycemic control. If your blood sugar was you know usually above the normal threshold. It, those patients have tended to see uh, the greatest improvement in, in blood sugar levels on TRT. Okay, so number nine? Number nine uh, is improvement in bone density, but that would go without saying that testosterone is the precursor hormone for um, two metabolites, estradiol and dihydrotestosterone, estradiol being 
the sex hormone that is known to increase bone density. It also closes the kind of bone plates when, when you're growing into adolescence. But yeah, estradiol uh, as an adult can maintain increased uh, bone density. So that's why, you know, with guys that come through and they're like, well, I want no estrogen, please. And lots of testosterone. It's you know, it's not not how it works. You know, I think there's plenty of topics uh, and discussion of the benefits of estrogen. So you need that for bone density. I mean, bone density. You know, even without hormones, you know, the the evidence is there that if you do load bearing exercises, you know, compound movements, you know, that there's studies in elderly people doing that that it can increase bone density, and it's very much dependent on activity. You know, but if you're doing those right things. Uh, you know, those things right rather, and you do have optimized hormones, that is going to be improved if you've got a good amount of estrogen. Um, so again, multifactorial, yeah, you know. And there's many, many factors for you um, know, the increase of, of your bone density. And that is seen, guys have done scans uh, that have come through before before and after, and, and definitely seen an improvement in, in bone density. Um, you know, something to consider though, some people before they get on TRT, they actually have low estradiol, which would make sense because the substrate, the testosterone, is also low. So if, they've got low, if you have a low amount of testosterone, you'll probably have a low amount of estradiol um, you know, before you start, which is why there are so many benefits to being on testosterone treatment because you can uh, bring your estradiol up into, an, into a normal balance. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, I think in, in young people, if they, have a lot of, if they have a lot of fractures, you know, over a course of time, Hormones, they, they obviously is one of the factors that they look into because it is needed to, to maintain bone okay. density. Um, okay, so right, so finally we've got number ten. Yeah, so sleep is a, a really mm. important one. Yeah. Lots of guys before therapy um, are affected with poor yes, sleep. I remember this. When yeah. my levels went low a few times. I, just sleep was awful. In some cases, I felt like I, I had a little bit less sleep. I couldn't actually get proper good rest on sleep. So sometimes I would just wake up really early and I knew that's when I was really low. Something just wasn't right or I'd have the night sweats during the sleep. Before TRT? Yeah, well, yeah, when, when levels got really low a few times, yeah, yeah. in between. So oh, yeah, when, when you I was came on off treatment, and I came yeah. off and then you can really, it becomes very noticeable, sleep is mm. not right. Yeah. But on TRT, sleep uh, can get better. Yeah, I mean, uh, I th- obviously again, sleep has lots of factors, right? You've got a good sleep hygiene mm. and and not being on your phone and things like that, all the things we always we, we get to, you know, told about. But the, uh, the, if people have poor sleep before, actually it could be anxiety, it could be things like that. And if your anxiety levels begin to improve at this point on TRT, you might notice an improvement. But there are also guys that their perception of what good sleep is is, is, is maybe different. So they're like, I should be absolutely nailing, you know, 10 hours every night and I'll be super recovered. And, and, and that, that's what I'm expecting from CRT. And actually it can be that people start to sleep a bit less. So got, some guys say they wake up at like five in the morning, you know, when they're used to sort of dragging themselves out of bed, they feel rested, they've slept less, but if they're looking at the amount of time they've slept, they're like, well, I'm not sleeping, yeah. I've got insomnia. You know, so, that, so there's that as well. And, and uh, so it can vary, but we're talking about the 12 to six month mark. Yeah, and that leads us into with the sleep you may also have sleep apnea. And to say that you may have had an apnea already but wasn't that noticeable, in some cases, um, it may become unmasked. Yeah, so just to simplify it, just because so I know some guys don't know, yeah. sleep apnea is when you have an apneic episode in your sleep, either you stop breathing um, or it's classified if you've got turbulence through snoring, where basically the resistance in your upper airway causes you to have low oxygen levels in your yeah. sleep, right? So well, you keep waking up. You keep waking up, and lots of guys don't notice it, but mm. TRT is associated with sort of uh, unmasking, uh, mild sleep apnea yeah. that people so aren't aware of. Them. Obvious. So you may have suffered through it for years, it's just about bearable. Well, got it already. And then sometimes worsen, testosterone, you know, if you already have it, will bring it to light. Uh, yeah, so. And, and so the benefit is, well, maybe you can get treated sooner now because you're now a more obvious case to you, to the NHS or those who are treating sleep apnea. And if you are a sleep apnea patient that is being treated um, and then you start TRT because of, uh, they think because of how you sleep, maybe deeper sleep, but particularly because if you, if you have larger neck muscles and you've got more tissue because the testosterone is affecting it, mm-hmm. you might need adjustments of your current therapy. I mean, I've got right? sleep apnea. 
And some people say the only two things keeping me alive are the CPAP machine and the testosterone. No, it's... <laughs> But yes, it's, it's a good point. If, that, if that's allowing you to breathe properly when you sleep and get restful sleep, you know, you might need it adjusted if you're a current therapy, uh, currently on therapy, and you may unmask something like that, you know, if, if, it, if it's mild. So, and particularly at this point, if people are starting noticing that they're a bit more tired, it's absolutely something to, you know, speak to the doctor about. Uh, and get as as well as on the blood test of six months, it will uh, pick up if your hematocrit and hemoglobin and red blood cells are abnormal, if they're abnormally high, it may be due to a sleep apnea that uh, that's happening that hasn't been corrected or treated yet. So, and that's because testosterone, you know, through EPO, doesn't it? If if you are if you are going through low oxygen episodes or hypoxic yeah. episodes, you will make we should make more red blood cells to tr- to carry more oxygen in the blood. So obviously, the body just doing what it needs to do and reacting. As if you do start to, to get a lo- you know low oxygen in your sleep you can get higher hematocrit and hemoglobin. So that's why that's obviously monitored on therapy too, yeah. right? Um, so, so this wasn't an exhaustive list, mm. but um, we thought we'd bring things, it to you right? to give you yeah. some of the big uh, topics that you could expect uh, at six months on TRT. What to expect six months on TRT. We will do another video. We're always going to do another video. Yeah, we'll keep doing videos. So, so we'll, we'll, do a, uh, we'll do a year. We'll do six months to a year. And then we'll do another we'll one. Do, yeah. Should we do that? Oh, I'm tired of talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to do, to do a little bit longer. Okay, um, one year on TRT coming up next time. Um, so please like and subscribe if you if you like the content. Please leave us a comment. Um, if you've got any suggestions, you know, please pop them in the comments as well. Ring the notification bell um, if you want to be notified of more content coming up. Oh, Craig, just take over. You didn't let me do anything. Right, you go and do your one. No, it's all right. Thanks for watching. See you next time.